What's up everyone? I'm Matt with Ozark Overland Adventures and today I've got a review of the new EcoFlow River Pro and ever since I made my very first video on power stations with the Jackery 500 versus Goal Zero 500 back toward back in last fall people have been asking me to review this EcoFlow product because it does some very amazing things that so far no other power station that I've that I've tested and used can do. Ozark Overland Adventures is proudly supported by The More Expo, the Midwest's only indoor event for adventure travel enthusiasts. Artemis Overland Hardware. They have the passion and knowledge to ensure that your next outdoor experience is more than a camping trip, it's an adventure. And the Big Iron Overland Rally, a three-day weekend camp out and concert experience at the Big Brutus Historic Landmark. What people rave about most about the EcoFlow is how crazy fast these things will charge. Let me give you the specs. This is a 720 watt hour portable power station, solar generator, you call them all kinds of things. Um, it has a regulated 12 volt, so it's great for running your fridges on your you know, overlanding camping, car camping trips, whatever. It has four USB ports, one USB-A port that is fast charge, two regular USB-A ports, and then a USB-C 100 watt PD port. That's awesome. Most of them have 45, the Goal Zeros have 60, um, the Jackeries have a whopping 18 watts on their USB-C output, the Blue Eddies have 45 watts, um, but the fact that this one has a 100 watt USB-C output is awesome. On the side here, there are three AC outlets, and this does have a 600 watt inverter in it that does some voodoo type of things, and I'll get into that in a minute. And over here, you have your inputs, you have your wall charger input, you have an overload protection little button there, reset button, and then you have your proprietary connector for car charger solar input. We'll get into that in a minute too. But overall, love the design. It's, it's about the same size as um, a, a Goal Zero 500, a, a Jackery 500. A um, little bit bigger just because this does have a little bit bigger battery. But they put everything in a nice compact package. The handle is nice and strong and sturdy, easy to hold. Um, much like the Jackery's, no flat top here, so you're not going to you know, be stacking things into, on top of this um, in your rig. Uh, the display is fantastic. Um, I love the fact that it tells you a actual percentage of how, much run, of how much battery you have left. This is at 92%. It shows you your input and your output usage. And it also tells you how many hours you have left or minutes, depending on how much power you're using, how much time you have left at that current draw. And I love that. One unique thing about the EcoFlows is that they are expandable. You can buy a second, not a full battery pack, but an add-on kind of a jumper pack that you can plug into this to double its capacity to 1440 watt hours. And that little jumper piece is right there. I don't have that, but it is an option to, uh, to expand this. This has a life cycle of 800 cycles, which isn't bad. Um, Jackery, Goal Zero, they were, they're at 500 cycles. Uh, Blue Eddy and some other competitors, they're at 1,000 and 2,000 cycles. So 800 cycles is on the lower end, but better than some of the other big name brands um, like Jackery and Goal Zero. So not bad there. I mean, even at 800 cycles, that's gonna take a while and even that drops at 80% capacity. So it's not dead after 800 cycles, it just reduces the capacity by 80% and you still have a whole lot of life left in it. Um, just not 720 watt hours, a little less than that. This is the little box of cords that you get with it. And let me give EcoFlow some mad props. Their packaging is like Apple level, super nice. I mean, there's just something about opening a box and when a company puts the attention to detail into their packaging, you know they put the same attention to detail in their product. So 
mad props to that. Um, in this, you get your solar adapter, MC4 adapter on one end, their proprietary adapter on the other. You get the car charger, normal 12 volt one end, proprietary input on the other end. You get, uh, get in that a minute. You get the power cable. And you'll notice this is just your regular old like computer power cable. There's no brick for this. It's just the power cable. The whole brick piece is built into the unit. So all you need is this. And if you lose this, just any computer cord will do. And what else is in here? Let's see. You get a uh, small DC to DC converter cable for the two DC ports here on the front. I've never had any device that uses these, so I don't even know what would. You get a very detailed owner's manual with a lot of information in here. Um, how to clean it, all the different ins and outs of the features of this thing. Um, fantastic user manual. Um, DIY instructions for non-MC4 connector solar panels. It requires some, some splicing and cutting and putting MC4 connectors on there to adapt that. Um, and a warranty card that, um, okay. <laughs> they do have a two year warranty, which is great. However, it does say to use your warranty, you must keep your original packaging. How many of y'all are going to actually keep all of the boxes to all of the things that you buy? Like, is that what your attic is for? Just all the boxes? So I think that's kind of, kind of crappy. Um, returned items must be packaged in its original packaging to enjoy your warranty. So save your box. Um, hopefully, I'm not saving my box. Um, hopefully I will never have to use the warranty feature on this. Um, but if I do, I'm not keeping my box. And so far, another option that no other power station that I've looked at has is an app. The EcoFlow app allows you to connect to your device and go in there and change and customize a lot of the settings. In the app, It'll tell you your input and output usage, tells you your capacity level. You can turn on, watch this. You can turn on your different ports and stuff from this one. And here I can even go, hi, I can make a flash and then I can turn it off. I can do that with the AC over here. I can do that with the DC. And I just think that is, pretty darn cool. You can change, you can see your, your voltage settings there. You can change it from uh, your voltage frequency if you need to. Um, turn X boost on and off. I'll get into that in a minute. Um, check your battery, you know, the, that capacity deal. And in your systems, you can change it from Fahrenheit to Celsius on your temperature of your unit, LCD standby time, overall unit standby time, quiet charging on and off. So when you plug this, the, the wall charger into this thing, it kicks in, does the major voodoo stuff and the fans kick on, but you can actually lower that down to charge it slower and not have the fans come on. Your DC mode, you can, your charging mode, you can select auto, you can select MPPT if you're charging this with solar or adapter if you're charging it with a wall adapter. Uh, but just leave it in auto because it knows how power is coming in. And then it actually has firmware updates. You can update the firm, firmware in this and there's actually a firmware update that I need to do. And I haven't done that yet. And then you can restore everything to factory. So love the fact that you can control all of that in the app. So let's talk about that crazy charging time. A typical power station like a Jackery 500, Blue Eddy AC50S, Gold Zero 500, plug the, the wall adapter in and it's gonna take, you know, six, seven hours to charge it from zero to 100%. They're pulling about 100, you know, about 100 watts or so with their power supplies and, you know, five to 600 watt hour battery. That's gonna take six or so, or a little bit longer hours, depending on how 
powerful the, the, the power bank is. Let me show you just how much power this thing will input plugged into a wall. Fans kick on. You can see it's climbing 200, 300 watts of input, 400 watts of input. Fans kick on a little more, 550, 600 watts. 659 watts of input. This is a 720 watt hour battery. This thing will recharge from zero to 100% in just over one and a half hours. That is absolutely incredible. I have no idea what kind of witchery and voodoo and crazy magic they have going on inside this, this plastic case, but that is unreal. Absolutely unreal that you can recharge this from zero to 100% in just over an hour and a half. The fact that this thing is putting in 665 watts to charge this thing is just blows my mind. That is the big claim to fame with the EcoFlow units is their crazy fast recharge times on AC. So let's talk about those other recharge times. The other recharge times are pretty standard compared to the competition. Car charger, about six hours, not bad. I mean, it's better than some. Jackery says like 14 to 16 hours for theirs. That's ridiculous. But six hours on plugged into the car adapter, that's not bad. Solar, this will accept around 200 watts of power of input. I've currently got the EcoFlow River Pro plugged into a Blue Eddy 200 watt solar panel and it's currently pulling in 137 watts which is about what I would expect on this very slightly overcast day. There's some very thin clouds up in the air um, but it's doing quite well. I did try plugging in both panels for a total of 400 watts and it would not accept that but with this panel, it's giving me about 134 watt input. And I love the fact that the screen tells you that it can be fully charged at where it is now. It's at 92%, but in 52 minutes, it can be fully charged. I just think that's awesome. But I was hoping to get a little better performance out of the solar panels because of how crazy fast this thing will charge on AC. But it does have limitations on its solar capabilities. But it is on par with you know other power stations in this class so not bad so with the solar adapter you're going to be able to recharge it you know four and a half plus hours depending on the solar panel you have and how much actual sun you're getting pretty good performance there 200 watts of input for solar is not bad at all um, now let's talk about these inputs um, i love the fact that they include the charger MC4 seems to be the, the standard these days. However, there are some solar panels that don't come with MC4. And that's why they give you that little DIY guide in the, in the box. Um, because you can use this with any panels. Um, EcoFlow does make panels. I don't have any of their panels, but like I said, yesterday I was testing it with the 200 watt Blue Eddy panels that I really love, um, Jackery makes panels both 100 watt and 200 watt uh, but the jackery panels and some other panels have um, the eight millimeter port and this has their own little proprietary port yay for them for for giving the adapter but if you happen to to lose this or you happen to have a solar panel that doesn't have mc4s then you're going to have to do some some rigging there but you know it it works and they give it to you, so yay for that. Um, and not every car charger, if you lose this car charger, you're not going down to you know, the, the truck stop or anywhere to get another uh, car adapter for this. You're, you're gonna have to go back to them and get one with their little little proprietary adapter. So I wish, I wish they just used the standard eight millimeter 
plugs for that. So the big question that people want to know on this channel, because this is an overlanding off-road channel, and we use these a lot to keep cameras charged, to run our fridges when we're parked at camp for extended periods of time so they're not running off our vehicle battery. And that's what the people who watch this channel mostly want to know. And this one performed pretty well. When I had this plugged in to our Dometic CFX 355IM, it ran for 53 hours and 52 minutes. Well into two days. Not bad. That is on par with the Jackery 500, the Gold Zero, the Blue Eddy ACS, AC50S. Um, but I honestly expected more because those are 500 watt hour batteries. This is a 720 watt hour battery. I expected this to power the fridge quite a bit longer into three days um, compared to the competition. And I suspect that there's some sort of, you know, percentage battery protection that this doesn't allow it to go below a certain point. And that's why the runtime on the fridge, exact same conditions for all those tests, by the way, but that's why this ran the fridge about as long as them because they're being a little more cautious on their battery protection. So just a theory, I haven't confirmed that, um, but that's what I suspect. There's a little bit of uh, protection going on to not drain the battery to complete zero, but very respectable. And you know, with the solar input and the car charging input, there's no issues using this to, to run your fridge, power your devices while you're on your trips, keep your cameras going. You can use this thing for, for running a blender and, you know, an Instapot or a crock pot for a while and be able to keep it topped off and recharged. So not going to, not going to knock it for that, um, for that performance on the fridge because that's, that's very respectable. And with the ability to recharge it. I think you're gonna do very well with this. This does have pass-through charging, so you can have a solar panel plugged into it, have your fridge plugged into it at the same time. Solar panel will be charging it, the battery will be running your devices, and it can keep it balanced. Most likely, the input's going to exceed the output, and you can use it indefinitely, so yay for that. And you know, if you're running it in your rig, you can keep this plugged into your car charger and your fridge plugged into this and it'll keep it running all the time. Now let's talk about the inverter on this thing because along with the input having some crazy voodoo witchery going on here, the 600 watt inverter does some crazy cool things to allow you to run higher powered devices than what 600 than the 600 watt inverter would suggest. This has something called X boost technology. Ooh, sounds, sounds super fancy and, and, and techy, right? But there's some sort of crazy thing going on in here that you can actually power devices that will run up to 1800 watts. And they say 1200 watts is actually sustainable. But there's a caveat with that. How this does that, that's really cool that they will allow you to do that with some devices. Not all devices will work on that. So what they do is they actually lower the voltage a bit to be able to run those higher powered devices. Now it has to be a device that's not picky about the voltage input. And I'll show you. The hairdryer, if you go on longer trips with your wife and have a shower, she probably wants to know how she can dry her hair. Um, and I have tested the hairdryer on a lot of the other power stations and the 500 watt power stations with the you know, typical 500 watt inverter, they will run these on high fan, low heat and do okay. So let's see what happens with this. Turn that on. Turn, plug that in. So we're on medium heat. We're gonna go low fan. We're drawing 508 watts. Not bad, it's gonna sustain that. And you can see on the display, you could run this hairdryer for about an hour. That's cool. Let's go medium heat, high fan. Oh, 
We're now at 596 watts. So right at that 600 watt capacity of the inverter, still going strong. Now let's kick it up to high heat and see what happens. Did you hear the hairdryer throttle down? And that's because it dropped the voltage, so that dropped the power in the hairdryer. So now the fan's not working as hard. It is putting out a little more heat, but the display is showing that we're still at that 598 watts output. So can you get a true 1200 watts Ah, I turned it down to, to medium heat and now the fans kicked on again. So it's not as hot, but the fans blowing harder. So can you get that true sustained 1200 Watts and get that actual output? No, you can't. So I think that's honestly kind of a gimmick, but the fact that you can, you know, run other devices, and it, you know, depending on how they handle that voltage drop, um, may or may not work out for you. So it's going to be very device dependent, but it does work. Kind of. And the price on this for a 720 watt hour power station with all this crazy voodoo, $649. That's not bad at all. Not bad at all. That's a heck of a deal, I think, honestly. Don't know if you noticed behind me, but I did decide to repaint the Jeep with a cool brown splatter paint job. So hope you like it. Now let's talk about the, the things that I really like and some of the things that I don't like about this. I love the capacity of this. 720 watt hours is fantastic for that price. Um, it has everything you need. The fast charging USB, the 100 watt USB-C is incredible. Uh, the light, if you've watched some of my other videos, you know how I feel about these lights. Um, they're, I mean, they're kind of a gimmick. Who's, who's gonna use this as your 16 pound flashlight around camp? I mean, if you had this setting up and needed a little light out here on the table, maybe, but uh, I, some of these lights that they put on here, I just think are a joke. But the USB outputs are fantastic. Regulated 12 volt, fantastic. 600 watt power supply, three outlets, fantastic. I can plug, you know, drone batteries in here, camera battery in here, and have multiple things charging um, that I would use on my trips. Um, and I think that's fantastic. You know, a lot of the other ones only have one output um, or two max um, in this category. So the fact that it has three is fantastic. Um, the charging on this is crazy cool, but that is only with AC. And here's the deal. When we're out on our trips, we're not going to be recharging that on AC because you're not going to be able to, to plug it into your rig and it's inverter. Um, so that's fantastic that it does that, but you're only going to be able to do that at home. Or maybe if you, you know, traveling and staying in a hotel room, it can charge it up real fast there. So it's awesome that it does it, but I don't know that it's actually practical for our use case, you know, aside from using this around the house, don't know where that would come in really handy. I'm curious your thoughts. Tell me in the comments where you have found the ability to recharge this crazy fast on AC input to come in handy. Now, if you've got like a high powered inverter in your rig, that sort of thing. Yeah, that would work. Um, but I don't, and I don't know a lot of people that do. So cool feature. You know, when you get it home from your trip, you can charge it up super fast for the next time. But I don't know, it, it's not really practical for, for our use. The fact that it has 200 watts of solar charging, that's awesome. The fact that it can charge in six and a half hours on the car adapter, that's awesome. Um, but the super fast charging that makes this thing really unique, um, eh. I mean, super cool, but eh. Uh, let's see, um, I wish, the AC outlets were on the front. Um, I wish everything was here on the front because if I'm going to, you know, stack this in my rig, um, 
this prevents me from accessing everything in, in one. I mean, that's just, that's nitpicky. I get it. Um, but just a design feature. I wish the AC outlets were on the front. Um, the fans don't bother me. Glad they've got the cooling. I don't like this little door thingy here. Um, it's, I keep thinking this is going to fall off. Um, and the fact that these are, are protected by this little door, probably great for, for dust protection and, and whatnot um, for the things that we do. But I wish it didn't have the little door. And I wish it didn't have the proprietary DC input. Um, I wish it just used a standard 8 millimeter input like all the rest. Um, so, I mean, you hear that? Eh. I don't know. I mean, great for dust, I guess. I love the fact that this is expandable. If you needed to add another 720 watt hour battery to it, you can do it for less price and have that modularity. I think that's that's awesome. The other downside that I do not like about the EcoFlow, and this is true for, for all devices that have these LCD displays. They're fantastic when you're in the shade. When you're out in the sun, you can't read these. Like, even if you try to block the you know the sun with your body to create shade there's just so much glare off these off these screens that you can't read them when i was trying to do the solar panel test i was struggling to to see this display out in the sun so bummer for that um but the display is really nice so it's kind of a yeah it's kind of a trade-off you can have the really nice crisp display and it not be very readable in the sun or you can have just a standard you know standard display kind of like the, the jackery comes with that you can see all the time so love the fact that this has an app that i can go in and really tweak the settings in this thing and not have to deal with any type of menu system no other power station that i've had that allows you to go in and, and make those type of changes and tweaks and so i think that's really cool so overall absolutely love the ecoflow river pro it is a fantastic power station and if you're an overlander off-roader i think it would serve you quite well if you are you know needing something for emergency preparedness in the house that sort of thing um, you know power outages natural disaster need the power thing i think you're still going to be wanting something above the thousand watt rating like the jackery 1000 the blue eddy eb150 that i reviewed a few weeks ago um, I think that's going to be more suitable for that type of thing, running your home refrigerator if the power's out longer term and that sort of thing. Um, but overall, I think this is a fantastic battery power station, solar generator, and for the money, $649 for 720 watt hours and this awesome technology. Yeah, totally think it's worth it. Totally think it's worth it. There's a link in the description for both Amazon and EcoFlow's website. Just pick which one you know has the best deal. But I, I think they're fantastic. Um, crazy props to EcoFlow for some great technology here and really thinking outside the box on these power stations. Uh, it's I really like it. Uh, thanks for watching. If this was helpful, hit the like button. If you've got questions, leave them down in the comments. If if you've got one of these and have your own experiences or can think of things that I didn't think about, uh, put those in the comments as well. And uh, really appreciate you taking the time to, to watch this. Subscribe. I've got more of these power stations that I'm going to be reviewing. Uh, some that have some other cool features. Uh, lots of great trips coming up. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on that content. And I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. See you next time. Bye.